Good morning and welcome to our liturgy. We pray that you are in good health and we pray in solidarity with you during this virus pandemic. We encourage you to visit the Basilica Parish for updates, sorry, the Basilica Parish website for updates, for links to prayers and devotions, as well as how to continue your financial support for our parish. Our celebrant today is Father Cecil Critch. Our gathering hymn today is number 383 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord, number 383. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. This morning we offer our Mass for Arden Kennedy, a young man, uh, tw- just 10 years old, who passed away in Halifax of cancer. And he is the grandson of Pat and Cecilia Kennedy. We all know Pat, he was a faithful member of our Ruah Counseling Board here, and also he was very involved in development of peace, and he certainly was former president, national president of development of peace. So we pray for Pat and Cecilia and for Arden's parents and family today and this, during this very difficult time. We've been praying for Arden in our parish, so we are deeply connected to the family. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts to forgive us for the times we have failed to be merciful and compassionate to others, especially those in need. We ask the Lord's forgiveness.
God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have bestowed on us paschal remedies, endow your people with heavenly gifts, so that, possessed of perfect freedom, they may rejoice in heaven over what gladness them now on earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and, the other, and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And Peter testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added to their number. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
His responsorial psalm is at number 47 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Number 47. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Mary Magdalene stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white 
sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and another at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that she had, he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. In these difficult days of the isolation and continuing isolation and darkness many experience as we journey through the virus pandemic, when so many people are confined to their homes, the snow is melting and we are seeing the gradual return of our gardens as they slowly become places of new life. Some shrubs are coming into bud, green shoots of grass are beginning to slowly grow, and we can see the green tips of the crocus and the tulips and the daffodils. The dead of winter is slowly beginning to transition into the new life of spring. In the Easter Gospel reading today, we meet Mary Magdalene weeping at the empty tomb of Jesus after witnessing his brutal death and the blurry of Jesus. All of us have wept at the death of a loved one some, at some point in our lives. The sadness of loss is one of the deepest of human agonies. Mary's deep sadness at the death of Jesus has been compounded by the absence of his body. But then we see the light of the risen Lord's presence shine through the darkness of our grief. In the Gospel reading, Mary's longing for Jesus was satisfied. The risen Jesus spoke her name, and her sadness disappeared as she clung to him. Yet even in that moment of great joy, she had to learn to let go of Jesus as she had known, as she had known him, because Jesus was returning to the Father. From now on, he would relate to her and to all the disciples in a new way. He would be as close to her and, and his disciples as he ever was, Indeed, even closer, but in a different way. Like Mary, when we are blinded by grief at the loss of someone we love, we don't always recognize the presence of Jesus in our lives at that time. Mary was blinded by her grief, and she did not see the Lord present to her in the very simple and ordinary guise of the gardener. Yet he was there calling her by name, Mary. In these difficult days, we're all aggrieved the death of loved ones, and especially today, the Kennedy family who are grieving the death of young Arden, who is so young, 10 years old. We pray for the special grace for you to know that Arden will follow Christ's path of resurrection and be raised to new life with him after following Christ's path of suffering through his cancer for such a long time. We pray today for you and for all of us to have eyes to see the Lord's presence and ears to hear his personal call to us in the midst of our sadness and grief. Jesus comes to us every day as he came to Mary Magdalene to bring light to our darkness and to proclaim the triumph of life over death. From being blinded by grief, Mary became the messenger of Easter joy to the other disciples. She became the apostle to the disciples. We can come to recognize each day the various ways that Jesus is still alive among us, not only in the Holy Eucharist, which we celebrate today, but also in the Gospel we read and in, our, in each other. We will find the Lord Jesus if we search for him, for he is never far away. He is the Good Shepherd who knows us and calls each of us by name. He came to seek and to save the lost, and we need to let ourselves be met by him in the ordinary people and events of our lives. As with Mary Magdalene, so he sends out us out 
to proclaim by our lives, I have seen the Lord. We offer our prayers of intercession today, trusting in God's merciful help for us. For our church, that our celebration of the resurrection of Christ may transform and strengthen our commitment to be a resurrection people, a people of hope, as we respond to our baptismal call to be the light of Christ for our world, we pray to the Lord. For those who hold positions of local, national, and global leadership, for scientists and medical professionals, that they may find a resolution to the virus pandemic, we pray to the Lord. For the poor and suffering of our world, that they may receive comfort and help in times of distress, especially during this virus pandemic, we pray to the Lord. For all the sick, lonely, isolated, and heavily burdened in our homes, health care facilities, and hospitals, and for those who provide compassionate care for them, and we pray for the protection of our health care professionals and first responders, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Arden Kennedy, Father Pat Power, and for comfort and prayers for all those who mourn the loss of loved ones, that they may rest in the peace of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the grace and blessings you give us every day. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Offertory hymn is number 404 in the Catholic Book of Worship, O Sons and Daughters, number 404. my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray, accept in compassion. Lord, we pray the offerings of your family, that under your protective care, they may never love what they have received, but attain, never lose what they have received 
but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who takes away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. And therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world to bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy and your faithful people. Remember your servant, Ardent, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Peter and Paul, St. John the Baptist and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with them to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We pray 
pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We share the peace of Christ now with one another. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is number 604 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Seed Scattered and Sown, number 604.
Let us pray. Hear us, Almighty God, and as you have bestowed on your family the perfect grace of baptism, so prepare their hearts for the reward of eternal happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our prayer to Mary for help and protection during the pandemic. O oh Mary, you always, always shine, shine on our path, path as a sign of salvation and of hope. hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as you are told by Jesus who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger or glorious Virgin Mary. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless all of us today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Our missioning hymn is number 385 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, number 385. <laughs> 